As anyone who is passionate about something, I wanted to take some time and talk to you about my passion. I wanted to show you pictures of beautiful violins, play recordings of the greatest artists of the violin, tell you the most inspirational stories I know, and share my appreciation of all the beauty music brings to our world. But then I thought, you probably don't need that. If you are here, I assume you already share my passion and you are eager to start playing yourself. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about how the sound of the violin is made and along with this, we'll review the parts of the violin. So here is the violin and here is the bow. In a very simplified explanation, the way we create sound is by drawing the bow over the strings. Once the strings start vibrating, this makes the bridge vibrate. This one is very important and you need to remember it. It's called the bridge and we'll be using it a lot when we talk about sound production and sound quality. The bridge makes the top plate of the violin vibrate. Then the sound post, uh, this little tiny piece of wood inside the violin is the sound post. The sound post transmits all the vibrations to the back plate of the violin. So now everything is vibrating. As I'm describing this, it seems like a long process, but it actually happens incredibly quickly as the sound vibrations in the wood travel with the speed of around 3000 meters per second, depending on the density of the wood. So the moment you draw the bow or pluck a string in a fraction of a second, this whole process happens and the whole box starts vibrating. As soon as the box of the violin starts vibrating, the air inside is pushed to vibrate with the same frequency. The air moves out through the F holes. This one is another one you need to remember. The F holes are these holes on the top plate of the violin in the shape of the letter F. The sound comes out from here and moves towards the listener. So, the parts of the violin we mentioned so far, the strings, the bridge, the sound post, and the F holes. Also important one is the fingerboard, this long black piece of wood uh, where we put our fingers. When we press a string on the fingerboard, we are stopping the string to vibrate with a different length. For example, the whole length of the string is from the bridge to the nut. That's another important part to remember. The nut is this little piece of wood at the end of the fingerboard. So when we bow the open string, it vibrates with the whole length from the bridge to the nut. However, if we press the string, it vibrates from the point we have pressed to the bridge. So now we are creating a different length for the string to vibrate. Shorter strings vibrate faster and create higher pitch or higher sound, higher notes. Longer strings vibrate slower and sound with a lower sound, lower pitch, lower notes. We'll talk more about this when we actually start playing. Another important part we have to mention is the scroll. It has no particular important, importance for the sound, but it is a beautiful ornament and very prominent part of the violin. These are the tuning packs. This is where we tighten and loosen the strings so they're tuned in a particular way. Most of you will have fine tuners one or more. These are located on the tailpiece and they change the pitch of the strings very gradually so you can fine tune it easier. Again, 
fine tuners, tailpiece. You don't have to remember these for now, as we are not going to talk about them often, but if you remember them, it's a bonus. So, fine tuners, tailpiece. Okay, let's revise the other parts of the violin we talked about. Strings, bridge, soundpost, F holes, fingerboard, nut, scroll, tuning pegs, fine tuners, tailpiece. Let's now look at the bow. It's a wooden stick made in a very particular shape, so it has a slight curve in the middle. This curve, as you will see, is very important for some of the bow techniques. It has horse hair, which you probably know, cover, covered with a layer of rosin for better friction. When we move the bow over the strings, it's the hair that actually touches the strings and make them vibrate. See, the horse hair has a special surface. If you look at it under a microscope, it is not smooth, but just the opposite, quite rough. It has a surface which reminds me of the shingles of the roof of a house, or little teeth, if you would. These little teeth catch the string, pull it slightly, and as they release, the string starts vibrating. Then the next one catches the string again, pulls and releases, and the string starts vibrating again. This process repeats many times, very quickly, when we move the bow on the string and we hear it as a constant sound. So, the hair is attached to the tip of the, of the bow and on the other side to the frog. So, this is the frog, this is the tip. The hair is tightened and loosened by the screw at the end of the bow. We tighten the hair each time before we start playing. It should be tight enough so the stick doesn't touch the strings when we play, but it should not be as tight as to make the bow, the stick, almost straight. The bow should always be slightly curved. And also, don't forget to loosen it each time before you put the violin away so there is no stress on the tip of the bow while you're not using it. That's all you need to know about the violin and the bow for now. As I start explaining how we play, I'll be giving you more information. The next lecture is about the bow hold. Here is a quick tip. Get a pencil. See you in the next video.